a cowboy friend took me in out of out of the hospital into his home and let my mother stay there too. And uh, then my mother had to come back home, but I couldn't come the shape I was in. And uh, so she um, she went home, and and then that would leave me alone a lot of times. Uh, the um, the man worked at the studio. He's a boom truck driver, and the woman worked uh, as housework in other people's houses, and their kids went to school, and that left me home alone. And the youngest boy there, Bobby Close, says to his mother one day, says, "This dog has been with me all day long. Can I keep it?" "Oh no," she says, "It belongs to somebody." Well, she says, finally she said, well, if it's still here tomorrow morning, you can keep it, but we'll go to the store and we'll advertise, you know, and try to find out who it belongs to. Well, it was still there the next morning because he'd tied a, a string to it and was tied to the fence. And so she put an advertisement in, on a, a, a board in, at the local store and put them around on posts and things. And nobody showed up for the dog, but about three days later, the dog had pups. Well, that's, uh, she said, now, we'll have this dog spay after this gets through nursing these pups. And uh, you can't have any of the pups, just have this dog. And so he had to give all the dogs away. And when they were about eight weeks old, he'd give them all away except one. And uh, he knew his mother wasn't going to let him keep it. And she said, he said, Mom says, Frank's awful lonesome. You think uh, if we give him this puppy, it would give him company? And she consented. And that's the puppy that, uh, that they gave me. And, uh, and, and the next day, uh, I'm having breakfast all alone. And I see this puppy's head stick it out. And I took a piece of sausage I had and tossed, and, and, and the puppy snuck out and got it. And I tossed it to other people. And, and, and pretty soon he was in with about three feet of me. And so I reached out for him to come to me. And I leaned too far and the wheelchair turned over. And as he jumped, it kind of pinned him by the tail, and he was a snapping me in the face and a screaming and a barking. And the neighbor came over to see what was the matter, and he saw my predicament and lifted the wheelchair up, lifted me up, and the puppy took off. And he told me, he says, uh, look, if you ever need help, let me know. He says, I'll be glad to help you. And so the next day, I looked out, and uh, here comes that puppy, he stuck his head out again because he knows I got food. And I started tossing again, and he got so close, then I reached over for him to take a bite out of my hand and the wheelchair, and, and I righted it. I didn't want to fall again. So it, uh, but the minute I did that, like this, he, the puppy, and he backed up just a screaming and a barking. And I tossed him a piece of meat, and he come up again, and I do this again, and he backs up and barks like crazy. And the man comes over and says, what's the matter? And I said, look at this. And so I did that, and, the, and I, so from then on, when I wanted a man to come over, I'd call the pup up and shake the wheelchair, and, and he'd back up barking, and I'd throw him the food, and the man come over. And worked out pretty good, so, so the paper boy, he would, Come and he would throw the paper on the roof <laughs> in the brush, and and I couldn't get out the front door. Uh, it had a little lip that went down on the porch, and there was three steps, and I couldn't make that. There was no ramp or anything. I was confined to the house, unless they they had a board they laid down at the back door, and I could get out with a little bit lower than the others. Anyway, I opened the door and I told the paper boy, I said, I, I can't get that paper. And so he come up, you know, they he wad them up and tie it, or they just fold it so that they can flip it. 
So he gave me a paper, and after that, he'd knock on the door, and I'd tell him to come in, and he'd give me the paper. But we got so we talked a lot. And so he'd come in, he'd stand, and he'd hold the paper, just hanging it down, and the dog went over and put his mouth on the paper. And uh, I threw a piece of meat, and he went over and he got the meat. And we talked, and the next thing I know, he got his mouth on the paper, and he's slobbering all over the paper. And he did that every time we talked. And then one day when he come in, I said, I think I know why that dog is putting his mouth on that paper and slobbering on it. I said, today, as we talk, I won't throw no meat, and we'll see what happens. So I did, we just talked and talked, and pretty soon he was disgusted. He, he jerked the paper out of his hand. I reached over and got the paper with one hand, give him a bite of food with the other. And from that time on, he would meet the paper boy at the, at the door, take the paper out of his hand, bring it to me, and I'd give him a bite of food. So we taught him to retrieve. And then during the day, I'd play ball with him. I'd throw a tennis ball. He'd go get it and bring it back to me. And finally, I'm so tired, I can't do that no more. So he, he, uh, I'd just leave him with the ball, not paying attention to him. He chewed a hole in the ball. So I didn't like that too much, so I just took the ball and stuck it over the doorknob. Well, there was a chair beside the door, and he got up there and he tried to get the ball off the doorknob because he wanted to play with it. And so I did this thing where I called him up and did the wheelchair thing, and he, you know, and the neighbor come over and said, what's the matter? I said, well, I want you to do a favor for me. Uh, take a screwdriver and unscrew the, the middle screw in the bottom hinge. And when somebody opens the door, that, that'll, when you turn the doorknob a little bit, it'll just open it. Well, he did what I said, and, and when you turn the doorknob, it popped it open. So then we had him just tape the ball to the doorknob. Now the dog jumps up in the chair, tries to, hit, and, and when he turns that knob just a little bit, the spring, and he could run down the street and get the paper from the paper boy. Well, that was pretty good. And uh, the paper boy uh, at first come in, and we'd talk a little bit, and he got a big kick out of it. So uh, sometimes the dog would meet him uh, three or four houses down, and bring, he'd give him the paper, and he'd bring it back to me, and he'd stop by and say, see if I got my paper. And, uh, and one day, the dog kept opening the door and leaving and coming back and bringing me more papers. He was following the guy and picking up the papers that he was tossing on the... And uh, anyway, the, the, the dog taught me all that stuff. And so uh, when I when they uh, when I got uh, uh, so I could walk, I had this dog pretty well trained. And the man gave me a glorified job at the studio on the day shift. Now I can I can work eight hours during a day. Still get the same money, but I'm working eight hours. I go to work at eight o'clock instead of getting off at eight o'clock. And the dog would either dig underneath or climb over the fence. I'd follow me to the studio in this old truck, and uh, and I didn't have time to to take him back. And so I had to I tied a rope on him, and he could get in the shade of the car. How far away was the studio from the house? About three miles. And 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 uh, so uh, I would tie him where he could get in the shade, and then I'd when I went out at uh, uh, at uh, lunch hour to see that he had water and stuff, and uh, then I'd, somebody would walk out there with me, and I have the dog do a trick or two, and uh, next thing I know, uh, when work was over, uh, they'd always follow me out to the car and let the dog do tricks and, and of course riding horses and stuff with those cowboys I got to drinking a lot 
And so I'd go to the liquor store and I'd buy a case of Old Empire Gin. It was 50 or 60 cents for a full quart, not a fifth, full quart. And uh, I shared that with a lot of people. And they call me Gin Zins. <laughs> anyway, uh, when I was at the liquor market one day, a man was painting a sign up there, and I had the dog climb up the ladder, and as he had a brush that he would brush the dust off and, and wipe it a little bit before he painted, and he stick the brush in his hip pocket, and he's up there on all fours, and the dog climbed the ladder, and the people are watching, and took the brush out of his pocket, came over and dropped it to me. And then he backed down the ladder. And uh, people thought that was so great, and the guy had reached and there's nothing there. And I said, oh, here it is, and I'd toss it up to him. The dog did that by himself? No, well, he, he would go in, and I, I'm, I, I would toss him the brush. <coughs> he, he'd, he'd drop the brush to me. I could catch it. <coughs> Sometimes he'd back all the way down the ladder with it in his mouth and just bring it to me. What was the dog's name, by the way? Jeep. And I named him after a song I heard, Jeepers, Creepers, Where'd You Get Those Peepers? And when Jeep had the first pups, it was accidentally bred by a three-legged dog that belonged to a, to a, a Mexican farmer. Um, I tie, Jeep was tied at the time, and, and I thought it was too big a dog. Anyway, the, the man that seen it happen, the dog got tied with Jeep, and then, and then Jeep uh, had these two pups called Creep and Peep. 